After the Obama inauguration in 2009, I decided that it was time for something different. I spent my entire adult life in the news business. I loved every minute of it. But I decided it was time for a change. So I left ABC to explore a new world, a new world that was totally unfamiliar. I had no idea what I was going to do. I thought I might go back into another media job, do some writing, some political consulting, some teaching. But then this, this opportunity came about to take over an organization called the Better Government Association. And for those of you unfamiliar with it, this is an 89-year-old watchdog group that was started in 1923 in the Capone era in Chicago by a group of civic and business and religious leaders who were sick and tired of Scarface calling the shots on city government. The mayor of Chicago back then was a guy named William Big Bill Thompson, who was given the ignominious distinction two years ago of being named worst big city mayor in American history. <laughs> For 89 years, the BGA tried to watch government in a variety of ways, through investigations, through pressure for clean elections, et cetera, et cetera. And over the years, there were a lot of very sensational stories and uh, a lot of publicity. And then in the 90s, in the early uh, turn of the century, the organization fell in hard times. So the organization that I took over in June of 09 was uh, actually on life support. We had two employees and a budget of only several hundred thousand dollars. We were toothless tigers, we were flabby watchdogs. We couldn't do much. Over the past three years, we've rebuilt this organization with the help of the good citizens of Illinois for a very simple reason. We explain this very clearly. We are watching. We are shining a light on government and we're holding public officials accountable because, folks, better government is our right. It's our right. It's their responsibility. These are our tax dollars, not theirs, and they have to be spent on the public, not the public officials. And so they have to be spent on the programs and the services and the goods that we need and want, not what they want to reward themselves and their friends and their cronies. Nepotism and cronyism and patronage pay-to-play and padded contracts and all those things that amount to essentially a transfer tax. My tax dollars coming out of my pocket that I work hard for and going into the pockets of a bunch of insiders who don't provide anything for us but get richer because they reap the rewards of the political system. So what do we do? Very simply, we do four things at BGA. We, we investigate, we litigate, we educate, and we advocate. You investigate bad behavior. And I will tell you that in the last two years, we've done a, a very, very many more investigations out here in DuPage County. The BGA that I inherited in 09 was mostly Chicago and Cook County Center. Most of the work was done downtown and at the county building. But I happened to have a nice lunch a couple of years ago with people who become extraordinarily good friends. And those were the people at Inland Realty in Oak Brook. Uh, run by Dan Goodwin, who's on the Page Airport Authority, and has been given a lot of accolades for having turned what was a cesspool of corruption into a model uh, for a good government agency. And Dan decided to get to become a supporter of the Better Government Association, and Inland became a supporter of the Better Government Association. And this year, Inland is actually the title sponsor for our fundraising lunch in October, which is a, a wonderful privilege for us and a reflection on the importance of a company in new page. Uh, I just want to say hi to Dale Gillette. Dale, raise your hand. Dale has been, uh, oops, Dale's the liaison between me and Inland these days, and um, Dale's vice president for public relations for Inland and a dear friend. She's now a member of our civic leadership committee. But at the urging of Dan and Dale and Dan Wagner, their government relations guy, we began to take much more serious looks at the suburbs and the collar counties because Dan and the others at Inland said, there is a lot going on out here and no one is watching. No one is paying attention. Come out here and look. And this will show you, we have done by my count, and I've got a piece of, second piece of paper, we've done 14 investigations in DuPage County in the past two years, 14 which is not bad because we don't have a large staff. I said we started with two in 09. We have 15 now. I said we had a budget of a couple hundred thousand. We're more than $2 million as an organization now because people understand the importance of what we're doing. But we looked at 
DuPage County officials who thought it was fine to have two government jobs and two government pensions at the same time, full-time jobs, mayor and county commissioner, we raised the question about whether that was appropriate. We raised the question about whether it's appropriate to pay your county board members $50,000, give them lavish pensions and lavish health care benefits, and have them work only a quarter of the time. Is that appropriate? We raised that question. Whether it's appropriate for one family that has had the milk business for the schools in the area for 100 years because of political connections, whether their business is appropriate when they've been accused on numerous occasions of being a front for, for, for women-owned and minority-owned businesses uh, as, a, as kind of a set-aside fraud. And adding insult to injury, they were charging an extra penny a carton for milk in Chicago, even though they were selling 100 times more milk in Chicago than in the suburb. Economy of scale tells all of us that the Chicago milk should have been a lot less per carton. They were charging Chicago more because of their connections. Uh, we talked about law firms donating to DuPage board members and then winning contracts. Is that appropriate? The fact that the DuPage sheriff's teenage son went on ride-alongs, and not only went on ride-alongs, but got out of the car and actually chased suspects. This is a 17-year-old playing cop with everything but a gun. Think of this, you're taxpayers. If he had fallen and broken his neck, if he had tackled a suspect and the suspect had broken his neck, you guys would be on the line for a multi-billion dollar lawsuit. Because this is not an individual who's, who's indemnified by, by virtue of being a police officer. So one by one by one, we are trying to move the ball. And most of those investigations accomplished small movement across the field. The good news is that as an organization, we have been able to start racking up results because the investigations lead to policy recommendations and more and more public officials are listening. When the mayor of Chicago ordered uh, hundreds of credit cards to be torn up because they were being abused by public officials, that followed a BGA investigation. When the state legislature recently abolished the legislative scholarship program, which was used as a political reward for friends and cronies rather than for kids who were deserving of the scholarships, that was a BGA investigation. The movement toward the eventual abolition of townships, which in an urban area like this are a virtually useless form of government, that followed BGA efforts. We are about five very simple principles. Um, I, there's an acronym I thought of. The acronym for the BGA right now, we demand of our public officials faith, fairness, accountability, integrity, transparency, and honesty. There's a sixth one, efficiency. Unfortunately, there's no E in faith, unless you live in England, in which case you can add the E. So if we ever start a BGA in England, we can have the E added on. Been doing it for three years, and I'll leave you and move on to the program, which is a couple real brief thoughts. This, these training programs are the bedrock of who we are. These training programs plus the investigations. The investigations turn over the bad behavior that can result in change. But many of the tips that lead to the investigations come out of these training programs. At least five really good stories came from you folks who attended a training session and then came back to us with things that you saw, heard, and felt. It's very simple. <coughs> we need your eyes and your ears. We need you to attend meetings, and when, when the behavior of the public officials don't pass the smell test, we need you to call us or email us. You can do it anonymously. We treat everybody the same way we used to in the news business. We protect all sources. Now, most of you in the room, if you're laymen and not in government, you're not worried about your names being out. A lot of people in government can provide information, but they have to protect themselves. They need their jobs, understandably. But from this session, I'm hoping comes two things. I'm hoping that we get a few tips that result in other stories, because your, your information tells us how to get how to get in touch with all of us. I'm leaving about 25 business cards here. You can reach me directly by phone, by email, by cell phone. I'm always available. And lastly, and this is the one thing I'm going to ask you to all consider. I'm going to ask you all to consider becoming members of the Better Government Association. Um, and the reason for that is simple. The more members we have, the more regular people who support us, the more we're going to represent the entire state.